Radiation is a common environmental hazard in Fallout. Heck, the series is practically named after it. But the fear of radiation isn't just a game mechanic. It's rooted in real Cold War anxieties. Despite being called Project Sunshine, the government experiment we'll be talking about today was anything but bright. In the 1950s, US scientists secretly gathered tissue samples from deceased infants to study the effects of nuclear fallout. Families had no idea. It's a chilling, real-life story that mirrors some of the twisted science that we see in Fallout's world, from vault tech experiments to sinister pre-war projects. Let's get into it. Our story today starts in the 1950s. World War II had ended, and a new atomic age was upon us. While this was an age of progress and growth, it was also one of fear and uncertainty. Shaky tensions between the Soviet Union and United States gave way to the Cold War. Both powers were putting more and more resources into the nuclear bomb. Fear of global nuclear destruction was ever present across the globe. And so, the dawn of the nuclear age left scientists scrambling to answer one terrifying question. Just how dangerous was radioactive fallout? Today, this might seem like a silly question, but back then, the United States Atomic Energy Commission, or AEC, had stated to the public that worldwide radioactive fallout was harmless, that it wouldn't pose a threat to humans, animals, or crops. Obviously, this claim was disputed by scientists who had said that a safe level of radiation exposure doesn't exist. But, it would take one particular incident before the AEC would acknowledge the true threat that radioactive fallout posed. Castle Bravo was the first of many high-yield thermonuclear weapon design tests conducted in the Bikini Atoll. Detonated on March 1, 1954, Castle Bravo remains as the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States, at a staggering 63 petajoules, or like 1,000 times the fat man bomb that was dropped on Japan in World War II. As a result of the explosion, radioactive fallout fell onto the residents of the Ronjlap and Uteric atolls. Not only that, but the fallout had spread traces of radioactive material as far as Australia, India, Japan, mainland United States, and Europe. While Castle Bravo was a secret test, it quickly became an international incident. Those who were exposed to high levels of radiation started to exhibit radiation sickness, including nausea, alopecia, and skin lesions. The AEC had to acknowledge that radioactive fallout wasn't harmless. Not only that, but they actually started to take interest in learning more about it. And so, to get answers, the US government revived a shelved but comprehensive study on the dangers of radioactive isotopes. It was called Project Gabriel. The aim of Gabriel was straightforward, yet somewhat disturbing. To figure out the potential damage from radioactive fallout and how it would affect the biosphere. Scientists needed to understand which radioactive isotopes posed the biggest threat to human life. Their conclusion was that strontium-90, a highly radioactive byproduct of nuclear explosions, was one of the worst offenders. It had a half-life of nearly 30 years and could mimic calcium, lodging itself in human bones and teeth where it would continue to emit radiation and cause serious health problems, including cancer. However, while important, all Project Gabriel did was confirm that strontium-90 posed the greatest hazard to life globally. More questions about fallout from nuclear bombs needed to be answered. And that's where Project Sunshine came in. Despite its cheerful name, Project Sunshine was anything but. Project Sunshine was a secretive Cold War study and one of America's darkest secrets. 
Sunshine was tasked with determining the absorption of strontium-90 in human cells. Of particular interest was the tissue of infants and young children, whose developing bones would have the highest susceptibility for radiation damage. If it could be determined just how much strontium-90 was absorbed in the bones and tissues of the young, perhaps preventative measures could be developed in the future. But for now, testing was required. The disturbing part of Project Sunshine comes with the way these scientists procured the human tissue and bone samples. The U.S. Atomic Energy Commission contacted hospitals, morgues, and medical schools requesting tissue samples from the remains of the deceased. And while logically this would be the best way to perform radiation exposure tests, these samples were often taken without the consent of the deceased's parents. And it wasn't just an American effort either. Project Sunshine had an international reach, with samples being collected from countries like the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. The AEC was so desperate for these specimens that internal memos reveal officials lamenting how difficult it was to obtain samples without causing public suspicion. AEC Commissioner Dr. Willard Libby was quoted as saying, I don't know how to get them, but I do say that it is a matter of prime importance to get them, and particularly in the young age group. So, human samples are often of prime importance, and if anybody knows how to do a good job of body snatching, they will really be serving their country. But the secrecy of Project Sunshine couldn't be kept forever. When the details were eventually revealed years later, the public reaction was outrage. Families who had lost children were horrified to learn that their loved one's remains had been used in secret experiments. One account from Jean Pritchard, a British mother, mentions that her stillborn baby had its legs removed by British hospital doctors in 1957, and when asked if she could dress her baby in a christening robe for the funeral, she was told that she couldn't, with the doctors hoping that she wouldn't find out what happened. It's grim. The unethical nature of the study, taking tissue samples without consent, cast a dark shadow over what was supposed to be scientific progress. It was a grim reminder showing how fear of nuclear devastation could push governments and scientists to cross moral boundaries. If I'm honest, I think Project Sunshine is darker than anything we've ever seen in the Fallout games. Sure, there's plenty of dark and edgy bits of lore in the post-apocalyptic series, but we don't actually see anything to this level of twisted. Real heartbroken families were robbed of their informed consent, robbed of their time of mourning, just robbed. Fallout's world might be filled with mutants, ghouls, and their own dark experiments, but it's the real-life projects and initiatives like Sunshine that represent true horror. The pre-war Fallout universe has always used its retro-futuristic setting to hide the darker perils of unchecked scientific ambition and government overreach. The dark lore of Vault Tech, for example, feels almost like a direct nod to these real-life Cold War projects. Vault Tech was introduced to the public as a means of preserving humanity in the event of nuclear war, but behind the scenes, a different story was spun. We all know that most vaults were designed as part of some sort of experiment, whether it was testing the limits of human endurance, psychological manipulation and torture, or even forced evolution, each vault pushed past the ethical and moral limits of what was accepted. People entered the vaults thinking they'd be safe from the bombs, but they were unknowingly stepping into twisted, often fatal experiments. Take the newly introduced Vault 4, for example. Similar to Project Sunshine, the scientists there were working on finding ways to protect humanity from radiation. However, instead of just exposing human tissue to radiation, they went about it by crossbreeding humans with other radiation-resistant species. A twisted ordeal. Or consider Vault 12, a vault intentionally designed with a faulty door 
in order to see how humans would be affected by the swarm of radiation that would seep in. Those living in Bakersfield merely wanted to ensure their family's protection, and instead, they were ghoulified. The unsettling reality is that Fallout's world isn't just inspired by scientific paranoia, it's rooted in it, and it takes inspiration from actual historical events. The game's pre-war government and corporate powers constantly conducted these sorts of unethical experiments, mirroring the same moral failures we see in the real world with initiatives like Project Sunshine. In Fallout 4, for example, the Institute is notorious for its experiments on wastelanders, often viewing them as inferior and using them as disposable tools in their quest for perfection. They're responsible for not only kidnapping and replacing wastelanders with their synth program, but they also had an FEV research division where they would expose humans to the virus, morphing them into the Commonwealth's super mutants. This sort of indiscriminate collection of humans isn't far off from the cold and calculating nature of Project Sunshine. Then if we really want to get into this idea of unchecked power, we can look at New Vegas' Big Empty. The Big Mountain Research and Development Center epitomizes the very worst of scientific overreach. The team of scientists there, the think tank, were so obsessed with progress and invention that they left a trail of mutant creatures and hazardous technology in their wake. Let me just fire off some of the things that they're responsible for. Those giant winged insects that deal a crazy amount of poison damage? What were those called again? Oh yeah, the Cazadors. That's the Big Empties doing. They made a knife so sharp that it could cut through the cutting board, the Cosmic Knife. They're responsible for some variations of the Cyberdog. Yep, that was a pre-war creation. Those Coyote Rattlesnake hybrids? Yep, Big Empty. Why did they need to make a robotic scorpion for security purposes? I don't know. I guess it looks better than a frickin' laser turret. Oh yeah, and see all those walking skeletons in what looks like spacesuits? Those were once humans. You can thank the Big Empty for that. They're the epitome of just because we can, doesn't mean that we should. And one could argue that real-life government projects like Sunshine operated on a similar logic. The fear of nuclear annihilation seemed to make the ethical boundaries that should have accompanied these projects non-existent. It's in times of fear and uncertainty that we need human empathy the most. In both cases, the big empty projects and real life ones, it would seem that the pursuit of knowledge and desire for control and power overshadowed the need for basic human decency. Part of what makes Fallout so compelling is how it can reflect our own history even if it's through a hyperbolic or exaggerated lens. When you stumble into an abandoned vault, only to discover it once housed a twisted experiment, you might think, thank goodness this is just a piece of fiction. But more often than not, just like with the twisted nature of Project Sunshine, it becomes clear that Fallout's dystopia and our own real history aren't too far apart from one another. Fallout has always excelled at using its lore to tell cautionary tales about the dangers of unchecked power and the dark side of scientific progress. The vault experiments, the unethical practices of the Institute, and the horrific creations of the Big Empty all serve as fictional mirrors to real-world fears. They show us what happens when humanity's pursuit of knowledge, security, or survival goes a bit too far. Project Sunshine wasn't born out of a desire to hurt people, but born out of fear. A fear that drove scientists and governments to cross lines that should never have been crossed. It's the same fear that led to the creation of the vaults, to the testing of FEV on unwilling subjects, and to the merciless pursuit of better living through science in the Fallout universe. So next time you stumble across a terminal entry detailing some dark pre-war experiment, or hear a ghoul recount the day the bombs fell, remember, Fallout's greatest horrors might just be the ones pulled straight 
from our own history books. Before we close off for today, let's be clear. The real-life pain caused by Project Sunshine is something that can't be brushed aside. Families who lost children had their grief compounded when they found out their loved one's remains were taken without permission. That's a very real, deeply human hurt that no fictional story can match. When I draw comparisons between Project Sunshine and Fallout's experiments, it's not to put them on the same level. Fallout is just fiction. Twisted stories dreamt up by writers. Project Sunshine was a real event that shattered families and left scars that never healed. It's a sobering reminder of how far things can go when fear trumps basic human decency. That's all from me today, folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Join the Discord. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.